The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went to a town called Nain, accompanied by his disciples and a great number of people. And when he was near the gate of the town, it happened that a dead man was being carried out for burial, the only son of, a, of his mother. And she was a widow. And a, consid a considerable number of the townspeople were with her. And when the Lord saw her, he felt sorry for her. Do not cry, he said. And then he went up. And he put his hand on the bear. And the bearer stood still. And he said, young man, I tell you, get up. And the dead man sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him to his mother. Everyone was filled with awe and praised God, saying, A great prophet has appeared amongst us. God has visited his people. And this opinion of him spread throughout Judea and all over the countryside. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yesterday, somebody said to me that, you know, they remember that in, an, in August time, the, one of the rituals that we used to do long ago is in August time, you would, your mother would give you a purge. You remember that? Yeah. You prepare you for the next term coming. Get all the badness out to prepare you for what you have to go to now to learn. And they said to me that they, they felt that yesterday's readings and the homily was like a purge to prepare us for what God has in store for us coming. And in, in, in that sense, it's an interesting image because it is Holy Mother Church that prepared the purge with those seven woes that we've had over the last few days that really are a, a relentless look at how bad religion can get to prepare us now for a new feast, St. Monica, who herself is an image of motherhood and who many, like Henry de Lubac, has seen as an image of the motherhood of the church. St. Monica, you know, is, is one of these incredible women in our church whose power and authority is second to none. So we all know about St. Augustine and what he's contributed, but he, he, what he's contributed is all due to her. As a, as a young man, Augustine got into one of these heretical set, sects, Manichaeism, which is all kind of strange beliefs about, about the body being evil and about this and that and the other, and the world being divided with a good God and a bad God. And, he, so he had all of these heretical beliefs. And, and St. Monica, when she could take it no more, she excommunicated Augustine from her house. And she said to him, as long as you are going to be into these strange beliefs, you cannot come back to my house, you cannot dine at my table, and you cannot eat or, or sup or, or have communion with me. And she put him out. Well, you know, the church reflects on Monica's action to Augustine as motherly love, eh? as motherly love. Because there are times when a mother's love needs to be tough. And there are times when a mother's love needs to be mercy. And to know the difference is really so difficult. But it is that shock of Monica putting him out because one thing he knew was that his mother loved him. But it is that shock of Monica putting him out of her house and breaking communion with him, of excommunicating him, that, that forced Augustine to reflect again on his actions. And though, although he left his hometown and went far away, he, he was then chastened and, and also disturbed by the actions of his mother because he knew how much his mother loved him. He knew that. You know, Holy Mother Church too sometimes has to take a strong stand. 
and Holy Mother Church too has to chasten because of love. And one of the things that in our time, and you know we've been talking about domestic church long enough, huh? but, but Monica is giving us an incredible image of, of what it is to be a domestic church and, and how domestic church works well. Because in her tough love, she never in, enabled Augustine in his stupidity. She never enabled him and said, well, son, you know, he's my son, and well, whatever is whatever. She, she loved him enough to love him for the sake of his soul and his salvation above his worldly or earthly consolation that he would have given to her as a mother. Now, that's, that's language that's real hard to hear these days, you know, because we tend in our time to, to take the consolation of the child is our child and, and deal with it from, from that perspective. But do we really love our child sufficient to risk all for the sake of salvation? And that's what we see in, in St. Monica. She risked all for the sake of salvation. But she didn't put him out and leave him there. St. Augustine himself will reflect that the blood flowing in her heart flowed through her eyes on and watered her face constantly on my behalf. That, that Monica prayed to God with tears, with supplication, with, with a contrite heart, with, with deep emotion, with deep fervor. She prayed night and day for the salvation of her son and she did not relent until he came home to God and came home to, to being a Christian. She did not relent. And, and so this is the other side of the mother now. And this is the other side of Holy Mother Church. Because she, she could be both hard in her judgment because she wants all of her children to come to eternal life. But she is also compassionate and passionate about her children and she will weep day and night for the sake of her child so that one child will come back to know Jesus and, and come back to her bosom and come back to the table of the Lord and come back to live fully the life of grace. And, and this is how Holy Mother Church should, should be. Now we're saying that the domestic church and the big church are deeply interconnected, then we have to say that St. Monica is now a prototype for both the domestic church and the big church. And she stands as a witness against both because her love for her, her son was so profound and so deep that she knew no barriers to be able to bring him back to the table of the Lord and back to the bosom of the church and back to the, to the wellspring of salvation. Her tears are legendary, and that's why we see in our gospel today chosen for this feast, we see that text of the, of the widow who lost her son. And that's the best image of, of, of Augustine. Because all, although Monica had, had three children, she wept over Augustine as if he had physically died and been separated and did not relent until such time as God gave her a sign. And it was in a dream that she had where she saw a young man and the young man bid her to come to him and she realized that, that the young man was going towards salvation. And she left her home then and she went to find her, her son Augustine in a far off country and traveled over sea and over land to find him. And having found him, after praying for much time, this is about 16 years, after praying for much time, with tears flowing from her heart, he says in one occasion in, in his famous letters, the, the Confessions, he says, from the tears, from the water flowing down my mother's face, I, I received the waters of the church in baptism and were welcomed into the bosom of my mother church. Isn't that a beautiful image? That the tears of his mother become the baptismal water that brought him into his real mother, the church, and into her bosom. 
And, and it's clear from the, from the text of the Confessions that Augustine is, is not seeing Monica, his mother, simply as his earthly mother, but he's seeing Monica, Saint Monica, as his spiritual mother. And, and not only did she bring him into birth, she brought him into rebirth. And in another passage, he, he says that the pangs of childbirth were nothing in comparison to the pangs that she experienced for my spiritual rebirth. And, and, and he understood that, that his physical birth, as painful as that was, was nothing in comparison to the pain that she endured for those long years for his spiritual rebirth. And it is that spiritual rebirth that he is most happy with because of her. So Monica is an incredible woman. And, and because she chose to not give up on her son, but prayed for him with long tears day and night. Not only does he become a Christian, he becomes a priest, he becomes a bishop, he becomes a saint, she becomes a saint. Now, isn't that a wonderful image for domestic church and for big church? Maybe the challenge that we're facing when we see our children going in directions that we don't like. Maybe we're not understanding the role of Monica in our church. The role of the, the mother whose pathos is, is so profound that, that she will be relentless before God on behalf of that child until that child returns to the bosom of God, to the table of the family and to the table of the Eucharist. And, and that's what St. Monica offers us as both domestic church and big church, that both the big church and the domestic church needs to have far more concern for those who have gone astray, far more care for those who have left the path, far more love for those who have, have gone away. And that love needs to be both tough love and mercy at the same time. And that's what St. Monica displays over the love of her, her son. There's a beautiful and a very moving passage in the Confessions of St. Augustine around St. Monica. When she had come to Augustine, she had brought not only him, but his friends into baptism and into faith and nurtured them in faith through her own witness. And, and he says, you know, it was clear to us all that she had no care for this world whatsoever and that her heart and her mind and her life was set on eternity. And when after he was converted, they were now returning home and they were in a port city waiting on a ship to, to cross the seas, she realizes that she's not well and she's becoming more and more ill. And she says to him, you know, well, it's him and his brother. She says, you might bury me in this place. And the brother says, no, no, mom, you can't bury you here. Hold on a while. It's so much better if we can bury you in your own hometown. It would be so much, so much better. And, and she scolds the brother. And she says, you see, you see, he has no care for God or for me. What does it matter to me where you bury me now? All I have come to do in this life is now complete. All I needed to do was to see you back in the folds of God. And now that you are in God's hands, there is nothing more for me to do in this earth. Where I die, there you bury me. Wow. Wow. Now that is, that is faith. That is incredible faith. The, the summation of a person's life is how they die. Eh? Because if all during our life we are, we are letting go into God's hands, if all during our life we are, we are bending our will to God's will, if all during our life we are willing to put God's will before our will, then when we come to the moment of our death, we will also be able to put God's will before our will and we'll be able to hand our life over to God and we would have no care at all for this world. And we would look steadily then, straight at God in heaven, and believe with all of our might that it is God who brought us into this world, and it is God who takes us out. And it is into his hands that we go. And therefore, we must go with haste and do not delay at all. And that's incredible faith that St. Monica displays. So in her death, 
she witnesses to the depth of her faith. And, and St. Augustine says, you know, St. Monica and himself in those days spoke about the glories of God and the things of heaven. And it brought great joy and consolation to both their souls. And, and, and that's an incredible joy again. That, that at that time that she, looking di direct at heaven, continued to minister to him and to tell him what was most important. That what was most important was not him or earth or earthly life or her body, or where she should be put to rest. But she was communicating the, the incredible joy of heaven and what heaven should be and how heaven should be. So let us now recognize in this incredible woman, this woman of grace, this woman of incredible stature, the ways in which our domestic church and our big church have now a mother in heaven praying and interceding on our behalf, a patroness, praying on our behalf and let us go to her that we might have the wisdom to know how to bring our children back to Christ back to his table and back to the bosom of the church amen